Here's a problem that involves some insights and nicely illustrates Newton's second law. Susie Skydiver dives from a high-flying, hovering helicopter. As she falls faster and faster through the air, how does her acceleration change? Does it increase, decrease, or remain unchanged? Let's first identify the forces that act on Susie. There's always the force due to gravity, agree? We can call this mg. If this were the only force on her, she'd be in free fall, and her acceleration would be g. But she's not in what weak physicists call free fall, not with air resistance. Let's let r be the upward friction force of air resistance opposing her downward plowing through the air. Now that we've identified the forces involved, and since the question asks about acceleration, we begin this problem with A equals. And here's where Newton's second law applies. Newton's second law guides us to the net force on Susie, which is mg minus r. We'll call the downward direction positive. Although mg remains constant, Air resistance R changes. The faster she falls, the greater R becomes. And the greater R becomes, the less net force becomes. A decreased net force means a decreased acceleration. So, we have the answer to our question. As she falls faster and faster, air resistance R increases making mg minus r smaller, resulting in a decreased net force and a decreased acceleration. Problem solved. We can go further with a bit of algebra and isolate g. Note how each step dictates the next step. Equations clearly guide our thinking. Note that if r equals zero, the equation reduces to a equals g, free fall. Does this make sense? I hope so. Note that if r builds up to equal her weight, mg, then acceleration reduces to zero. Yum on that? With zero acceleration, does this mean her falling velocity is zero? No, no, no. It's her acceleration that's zero, not her velocity. At this point, should have reached what we call her terminal speed or terminal velocity. Reaching terminal velocity means zero acceleration and she falls at constant velocity. After she opens a parachute, air resistance R will be huge and she'll slow to a lower terminal velocity. Let's shift gears. Our question about Susie's acceleration gets mixed answers from students in general. But what if the question instead asked about air resistance? Susie Skydiver dies from a high-flying, hovering helicopter. As she falls faster and faster through the air, how is air resistance affected? Does it increase, decrease, or remain the same? This question gets more correct answers from students. All you need to know is that air resistance is greater at higher speeds. Or let's suppose the question asked about net force. She dives from the high-flying helicopter and as she falls faster and faster through air, how is net force affected? Does it increase, decrease, or remain the same? Can you see that this question is one step in difficulty greater than asking for air resistance? That's because there are two concepts, mg and r. But again, the equation guides you to an answer. And can you see it's an additional step to ask how acceleration is affected? Do you think that your friends who get the initial question about acceleration wrong would get it wrong if they were first asked separate questions about air resistance and net force?
Some people don't like the idea of grasping for an equation when answering a question or solving a problem, but that's not me. I like the idea of grasping for an equation, one that contains what you're looking for. Equations are shorthand statements of how concepts connect to one another. Equations are more than this. They are guides to thinking. So if a question or problem asks for acceleration, begin the problem by writing A equals and go from there. If you're asked for average speed, start with V equals. Oftentimes that's the hard part, getting started. Or if you're asked for the force that such and such does on something, then just write F equals and go from there. Let me leave you with a question. Susie's cat falls from the top of a 10-story building and reaches terminal velocity before reaching a safety net below. Will the cat's landing speed be different if it fell from 20 stories high? Defend your answer. Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.